Spirit to come into this place. Again, open your heart and receive and make room for that Spirit, all right? Holy Spirit, come and fill this place. Bring us healing and a warm embrace. Show us power, make your presence known. Holy Spirit, come fill this place.
whom he has given us. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Ever equipping God as I speak, may you increase and I decrease. May the words you have given me for this message be seeds that rest in our hearts, that we might bear fruit for you here on earth. May I be bold and courageous in speaking what it is you've given me to speak. And may we as your people have ears that hear. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. I anxiously await every year the return of one of my favorite TV shows. <laughs> Have you ever been alone? Have you ever watched the TV series alone? It's in its ninth season now. Any of you watch alone? It's one of my favorite. There you go, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of my favorite TV shows because it's a story about ten people who are dropped off in the wilderness. I mean, the wilderness. And if they can stay the longest, they have a few weapons and, and some knowledge. And whoever can stay the longest wins $500,000. And so every week you get this diary because they have to take a camera with them. And they have to film themselves doing all the different things they're doing. And going all the places and learning how to fish and hunt and do all those things. And it's kind of a manly man show. But I've also got my wife hooked on it so it works, lady. But it's a competition about Who's the hardiest individual? Who can survive the best? And it's been interesting to watch because I've watched it for nine seasons. I haven't missed an episode. You know, DVR, it's a great thing. I haven't missed an episode. And what I found as I did some research on this show was, in all the people who've been placed on whatever island or whatever wilderness they've been placed in, the human nature, the, the human being has one thing that makes us give in to the pressure of a competition like a law. And that's that we have a need to be with others. We have a need to be with others. Because I'm going to tell you in the competition, it's begun over the nine seasons. You can, if you decide you want to tap out, is what they say, you just pick up, they've given you a satellite phone to carry with you in your journey. And if you want to tap out, you just pick up the satellite phone and they bring the helicopter in or the boat in and they pick you up and they evacuate you from where you are. And it's gone where it's been as quick as six hours. One guy met a bear face to face and decided he didn't want to do it. Until winters, and winters are staying about 87 to 89 days in the wilderness. Three months time. It's about how long they're lasting to win. That's what it takes to win. This year we're kind of hoping it goes to like 100 days to really see how hardy they are, but they're in the middle of polar bear country, so we're going to see how it goes. But I think about the suffering that has to go on for each contestant. I mean, you're pulled out, right? You say goodbye to everything you know, all the people who support you, everything you know in your life, your home, your security, all, all the love you've built over the generations. You say goodbye to that and you're dropped off and humanity says, peace be with you. Survive. Think about that for a minute. Think about what it must be like to go sit on an island by yourself and all you have is yourself. Late night, you want to talk to somebody? Hmm, hello, self. And there have been some pretty comical conversations that were taped with one person talking to their self. I mean, they have nobody. They need a shelter. They build it themselves. They need food. They've got to go figure out what food they can eat. Whatever they need, they have to take care of themselves. And I think what intrigues me the most about the whole, whole series is the suffering. I mean, I'm amazed at some of their skill set, and they all use traditional archery equipment, so I'm, I'm really amazed by that. But the suffering, why is it we like to see people suffer? Just how tough are you? Why do we have contests like that? For money, for, for personal gain. Paul talks about a whole different kind of suffering today. He talks about we as human beings, he's, te he's teaching his church, you're going to suffer in your faith journey. Your human journey is just like the people who are dropped off in the island. We experience life. We suffer when we're born. It's a, it's a tough process to bring new life. We suffer. And we experience suffering. And how we deal with that suffering in our life 
is what produces our faith. What produces our character. What produces what we see as life. How we project ourselves onto the rest of the world. Did you know that the number one thing you deal with in your life that develops who you are is how you handle your suffering? I mean, we can all rejoice and enjoy and party and have good times on high mountaintop experiences. That's easy. But getting to the top of the mountain, it's hard. If you're coming out of a dark valley and you've got to climb all the way to that mountain, top of that mountain, it's hard. But it's easy to stand up there and say that we've done it. But what's important is how did we make the journey? How did we make the journey? And today Paul's talking to his church and he church, says, church, we're going to suffer. The life of the church is hard. The life of being a Christian is hard. But we have to understand there is one thing that we've been given that sustains us. Our faith in Jesus Christ. I mean, there's lots of people who come to the front of the church and they profess it. They believe in Jesus. But put them in a tough moment and see what happens. See what comes out of their mouth. See what they do to others. See how they treat others. Because when you get into the suffering of life, you have to understand who Jesus is if you're going to be in that suffering. But it's how we go through that suffering it's how we go through that suffering that develops that relationship with Jesus Christ. I very seldom, and it's sad, I very seldom get celebration prayer requests. Did you know that? Very seldom. Hey, I just wanted to call you and tell you how happy I am today. No, it doesn't happen. <laughs> doesn't happen. I get, quest I get requests for, oh, so-and-so's hurt, so-and-so's broken leg, so-and-so's been, my marriage is wrecked, da -da -da -da, right? Because in our suffering, where do we go? If we are faith people, where do we go? We may not have ignored Jesus while we're on the temple, on the mountaintop, but when we get down in that dark valley, who do we call on? We call on the name of Jesus. Now, we don't treat others all the time like we're calling on the name of Jesus. But quietly and inwardly, if we profess Jesus as Lord of our life, we call on Jesus. And that faith that's found in God. We are justified by faith. Did you hear that? Justified. Justice has been passed upon humanity. And God has said enough is enough. My grace is sufficient for you. And you are with me if you believe that Jesus is the Christ. And you are in a relationship with me. No matter even in your suffering, I am with you. Do you hear him say that? Justified by faith. And in your suffering, I am with you. Now, there was one guy... I don't know how many days he had been there, but it was nightfall, and I think he had moved past the normal state of human being and had stepped over into delirium a little bit because his conversation with himself, now my wife and I, we laughed about it because we weren't in his situation, right? But And it made for good TV, but his conversation with himself was desperate. He hadn't eaten in several days. He, his shelter was leaking. He caught it on fire with his fireplace he built inside. And he was desperate. What about us as Christians? When we face our suffering, are we so desperate we forget about the faith we have in God? That we forget about the faith that, that walks with us, that goes with us in everyday life? Because we're justified by God. Don't ever forget that. Your faith in Jesus Christ justifies you that when the world is against you, God is with you. In your suffering, your darkest, deepest moments, God is with you. You can't deny that. God doesn't walk away. You do. When you want to open your mouth and blurt out all those words that discredit God, that's not God moving away from you. When you want to betray one of your family members because you think you're hurting more than they are, that's not God. That's you. But every time we suffer, God banished us to a world that would not be good. In the creation story, you know we're banished out of the Garden of Eden and, and life is hard. We'll, give, we'll have pain when we give birth. We have to work for a living now. We suffer. But it's how we deal with our suffering and how we grow in our faith. I like how one other text says it instead of the, the NIV, which is what I read for. It says perseverance. The other text says endurance. 
And they're kind of words that go together, perseverance and endurance. But endurance to me is that it's a journey when you use the word endurance. Now, perseverance means you've already been through it. And what I seem to understand about life is the suffering never ends. It's just the way it is. The suffering never ends until God reaches down and says, come on. We will face suffering all our lives. How we deal with that suffering defines us. It defines us. Whether we curse God or whether we make every day one worth getting up for. And I'm not saying or belittling your suffering because everybody suffers. But there's a way we're supposed to suffer with God in the suffering. Christ died for who? You and I. So that the Holy Spirit could be upon us in our everyday suffering. <laughs> and our suffering is varied. But every day we persevere. Every day we run the race that Paul talks about. The race of endurance. We become, now, I grew up running track and <laughs> my son, as you know, is a track athlete and he asked me one day, and he said, Dad, how many points did you earn in your track career? Now, this is a kid who, junior and senior year in high school, he was the high point track athlete, and he's earned several points at the collegiate level and all this stuff. And I said, son, I earned one. He said, what? I said, I earned one. How did you just earn one, Dad? And I said, well, I was running the hurdles, and one of the good guys fell down, so I made it to the finals, so I had the best view of the whole race right from behind him. And I earned one point. And he said, Dad, why did you keep running track? Why do we keep walking forward in our faith? I loved it. I loved jumping over a hurdle. I was terrible. But I loved jumping over those hurdles. I loved being a part of the team. I was captain of the team. Because of the way I played football, I was captain for the track team. <laughs> and I attacked hurdles about like I attacked the offensive lineman. But, you know, it's okay. <laughs> You see, life's not all about the glory. We suffered in workouts. I beat my knees and my ankles up. I fell on the asphalt track. I stuck a leg through a hurdle one time running full speed. It's not fun. But I was at practice the next day. Isn't that something we need to understand as people of faith? I mean, I love the orange and black. Demon pride never dies. Right? And I was ready to get up and wear the orange and black again. And I was terrible. Coach knew I wasn't going to make the finals. But he kept putting me in there. Because I believed. And I showed that on the track. What about our, our own human experience? We say we believe in Jesus Christ. But does our example every day show that? We walk through death. We walk through accidents. We walk through suffering of our loved ones. We walk through marital trials. We walk through trials with our children. We do all these things where life beats us up. People talk about us. They say things that are nice about us, which aren't true of us. But it gets out about us. And we suffer. Do we get back up every day and praise God? Do we get back every day and run that race of endurance? Because if you run that race with endurance... And you learn that in the suffering, God is with you. The Holy Spirit showers down upon you. And that you can walk through suffering with faith. Not pity me. But faith, knowing God is with you. Then there's something else that you find. I've always called it your metal. My father called it your metal. You, you're, you've got good metal, is what he would say. And that, the Bible says it's character. Character. What's your character? Now, I'm not meaning, are you the hilarious, funny guy? Are you the mean, gruff guy? Or what you are. What I mean is, what's in here? What's in here? What suffering taught you about life and about your faith? And through that teaching, what do you have that you can give back to the world? That's what matters. That's what your character is. Because, see, when we suffer, we have choices to make. We have choices to make how we come out of that suffering. When my twin brother died, it was devastating to me. And I wasn't very kind for a while. Because I didn't, I'd never experienced a pain like that. And it took me several weeks to where I could get back on my feet again and say how much I love Jesus. Because I'd never felt a pain like that. But now as I experience more grief later in my life, 
I understand God is with me in that grief. And I understand it's okay to just let go and let God be God. And know that your loved one's in the hands of God. And that, that in everything you do, God wants to be, God's comforting Holy Spirit wants to be with you. And that we can walk through, but as you develop in life, as you walk through those, those trials, through those dark valleys, as you walk through that suffering, you develop what we call character. And I wonder, what's your character in Christ look like? There's a story of a guy who was a sail of the seas, and he spent lots of time on a boat. And he said, the ocean can be friendly or it can be a demon. He said, because when a storm comes up on the ocean, the winds can blow from 20 to 100 miles an hour. Waves can go from 10 feet to 50 feet. And an ocean vessel can be tossed around like a little toy. It can be lost in massive storms like that. And he said, you want to talk about fear. You want to talk about fear. There's real fear. And you have to learn to have character on that ship when you're going through that storm. What I want to say is if you, if you suffer, right, and, and you learn that in the suffering God is with you and the Holy Spirit's upon you because of your faith in Jesus Christ and you endure the sufferings or persevere through the sufferings, as Paul says, then your character is developed enough that you have a peace about you. You have a peace about you that goes with you to where you can be a witness to other people. And he closes this chapter out. He's talking about these storms he's been in. He said, you know what's, what's the most unique thing? While we're fighting things on the surface, he said, I know that 100 feet below the water's surface, it's as calm as calm can be. There's not a ripple in the water. He said, while we're struggling for our life, I know that 100 feet below me, everything's peaceful and everything's calm. I wonder if when we suffer, and we go through that suffering and our endurance develops through perseverance, that understanding of God's peace. That whatever we're walking through, we know that deep down in the core of our very being, there is a faith that will not be moved. There is a faith that will not be shaken. There is a faith that will not be broken. That God's Spirit is upon us by the power of the Holy Spirit. And God is with us in those stormy seas. God is with us in our suffering. It's always wonderful at the end of alone. About every, I don't know, 15 days, they do what they call medical checks. And they fly the helicopter in or they bring the boat in to wherever they drop the person off. And on the phone they call them and said, hey, it's a medical check. Because they won't let somebody risk their life medically. If they test you and you're whatever, whatever, you know, and you fall below their levels, they pull you out. And they just say you're out of the contest because your body can't handle it any further. So they do these medical checks every 15 days. And as, the, as it goes further, they set it up. And then when you're getting to the end, there's two contestants left. I love this. There's two contestants left. You're 80 something days in. You're like, man, I hope my favorite wins. I hope suffer a little longer, would you? <laughs> right? Come on, you can do it. Just suffer a little longer. And I love it because they set it up like this. Because by then, there's hope, right? These people have persevered. They've suffered. They've persevered. Their character is set in stone. And what comes after your character? Character breeds hope. When you walk that trial of suffering, when you've seen God do the things that God does in your life, and that character of faith is instilled upon you, when you can see that, there's a hope. And I'm going to tell you that these people have been through a transformation in 80 days. A bunch of the guys, maybe even some of the women, they have beards. <laughs> right? They don't shave. They barely bathe. I don't, want to, I don't want to be one of the ones that goes and does their medical test because it's going to stink. Right? But they've changed. They're these slender skeletons of the human being that they, that they came in as. But in their mind and in their heart, their belief in their self is huge. They've been transformed. And they have hope in the 80th day. They have hope. They're going to win this thing. And I've watched it change the characters of the characters. They all of a sudden get this what we call a second win. And they decide they're going to win the thing and they have hope. 
Did you know that in your suffering you can have hope? Did you know that as you walk through your suffering, you can have hope? Did you know that as God builds a new character in you, you can have hope? And there's nothing more than what God wants for you than to have hope? That's what God wants for us, is to have hope for tomorrow. Hope for the victory. Hope that when God comes, that God will say to us, well done. Come on. Let's party. Let's get to heaven and have a celebration. Because you have endured. You have a strong character. And I know you've had hope for this very moment. Isn't that amazing? A friend of mine has a friend who won alone. Won alone. He was the baddest of the bad the second time he did it. And here's how they set him up. They set him up on the island and they radioed in and said, we're going to do a medical check. Brought all the big cameras in, all that kind of stuff like they always do. Boat cruised up. Mm-hmm. They jumped off the boat. They're talking to him, interviewing. Well, how are you doing? You're 89 days in. Blah 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 blah. You know, and there's a skeleton of a man that was there when they dropped him off, right? He's hardy looking. He's rough looking. And next thing you know, from behind him, walks his wife. 89 days. He hadn't seen his wife. 89 days he hasn't hugged her. He hasn't been connected to her spirit. 89 days they haven't communicated. And the interviewer pauses for a moment and looks past the guy's shoulder. And he turns around. And all that hope, all that endurance, that character that was newly instilled in him, fell to pieces. Because the mission was complete. He had done everything he was supposed to do. He had lived that 89 days as he was supposed to live. He had endured the hard trials and made his way to the top of the mountain to where his hope was full. And when he got to the top of the mountain, there stood his wife. His partner in life that God had chosen for him. And he turned around and he fell into her arms. And she hugged him. And they wept and they cried. Can you imagine? What it's going to feel like when the victory is finally over. When God embraces us after a life well lived. A life of suffering. A life where we learn what it means to endure. A a life that shaped our very own character. And hopefully a life that is sustained by our faith and is full of hope. God will be there saying, well done. Blessed are you, my child. You have won. Today, let us be full of hope. Let us run that race. And let us profess to others the good faith we believe in. Amen Amen. and amen.